What's up money tribe? Welcome back to another stock analysis video. And in this video, we are gonna be talking about Medifast. Now, if you guys recall, for those of you who have been following this channel for quite some time, Medifast was in fact one of my undervalued stocks for 2021. And it was a stock that I was recommending in 2021. It is a stock that I personally purchased. And of course, we are in a new year, so I am doing a clean out of my portfolio, reviewing all of my stocks, obviously holding on to the really good ones and getting rid of the stocks that I don't think are going to perform in 2022. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through my personal analysis on the stock. And of course, as always, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you my personal prediction in terms of where I think the Medifast stock is heading. I'm also going to talk you through my personal position in the stock and what I intend on doing with it. And uh, with that said, I think let's quickly jump into the charts and just have a look at what's happened on the pricing uh, over the last couple of months. So if we have a look at the last uh, month, we can see here the stock is actually up 5.72%. If we zoom out a little bit further to the last uh, six months, we can see it's actually down 24%. And over the last year, it is actually down 2%. So the stock price really did move quite a bit in 2021. Now, of course, we can see this in the 52 week uh, picture here, quite a little bit of uh, volatility for the stock, in fact. 336 on the 52 week high and 184.48 on the 52 week low. Now just quickly heading across to our uh, analysts at Simply Wall Street, uh, they feel that the stock is currently trading 63% below their fair value estimate. They also talk about the fact that they forecast earnings to grow at about 14% per year, in addition to which they've tracked the last uh, five years and the last five years tracking is showing about 39% uh, earnings growth over the last five years consistently. So really it has been pretty good. And then also one of the risk factors uh, that they are highlighting the fact that the dividend track record is a little bit unstable. Now, one of the things that drove a lot of revenue for uh, Medifast in uh, 2021, especially that Q3 results that came out, uh, was of course around the Optiva lifestyle solution, uh, which is basically a coaching and support system around uh, weight loss. Now, Optiva was the key driver for the company's third quarter uh, results where both earnings and sales exceeded the Zacks consensus estimate and rose year, off, year over year. So it is anticipated that this Optiva solution is probably going to continue to drive revenue going into 2022. Now if we come across and have a look at our stock sheet, there's quite a bit to cover here. So we're going to go through this as quickly as we can. I'm going to get you through my predictions in terms of where I think the stock is headed. So just very quickly, having a look at uh, that market cap, we can see sitting at 2.3 billion. We can see the share price uh, on the inception was 15.96, currently trading in that $200 range uh, with a P ratio of 14.73, and they have a healthy net margin of 11.18. Uh, equity is sitting at 157 million, which is an equity to market cap of 6.7% and uh, they do have a dividend which is costing them 41 percent on the payout ratio and of course that dividend is at 2.89 percent which is one of the reasons why a lot of people actually are invested in the stock now having a look at that free cash flow even after the dividend payment they still have a fair decent amount of free cash flow left over now looking at the key ratios there's a couple of things here that i really like first of all debt to equity is extremely low sitting at 10 percent uh, and in terms of their free cash flow, they can pretty much cover 82% of their debt position out of free cash flow. The price to sell is very, very competitive at 1.65, uh, price to book sitting at 11.91, and the five-year beta sitting at 1.44. So actually, the interesting thing about the beta is that it is tracking the market to a degree, um, but obviously the beta is slightly higher than the market, so of course it could move with or against the market depending on what happens. Now looking at the insider holding, it's looking at 3.45% uh, by insiders uh, and very strong institutional holding at 88%. There is a very, very small short ratio out on stock, 4%, uh, 4.59 to be precise with a short ratio of 4.9. Now have a look at this. This is the interesting part and this is probably the part that made the stock so attractive to me in the first place. Return on equity 93%, return on asset 41% and return on invested capital 274%. So certainly they have done very very well in terms of employing capital within the business. Current ratio is sitting at 1.87 so very healthy and then of course we look at our revenue growth, our operating cash flow growth, free cash flow growth 
and earnings per share. All of these really knocking the numbers out of the park. 29, 18, and 14, and 30 uh, percent respectively. So really big, big uh, growth numbers. Uh, and especially considering that these are compound annual growth numbers. So certainly very, very good performance. Now, if we come down to the year on years, as you would expect with a stock like this, a lot of green, very little red. So especially on the top line revenue numbers, if we're looking at total revenue, gross profit and operating income, uh, they've had three consecutive good years of growth. Net income on the bottom line is doing very well as well. Unfortunately, just a little bit of a setback here in the last trailing 12 months on operating cash flow and free cash flow. But again, if you compare these numbers against each other, they have gone backwards, but really I don't think it's too much to fret about. Now, if we come down to our 18 point checklist, as you guys know, we've got this separated into fundamentals, momentum and growth. And uh, on the fundamentals, they really are just knocking it out of the park. The P ratio is between one and 25. The net margin is greater than 10. Assets are greater than liabilities. The dividend cost is less than free cash flow. Debt to equity is less than 40. Current ratio is greater than one. And of course, shareholders have not been diluted in the last three years. So that really is a very strong fundamental um, set of numbers there. Now, if we go down to the momentum side of things, they're actually doing pretty well too. Uh, the only two areas where they've fallen short is of course on that operating cash flow and free cash flow, as I mentioned earlier, just falling back in the last uh, trading 12 months. But pretty much everything else knocking it out the park. Their top line uh, numbers are looking good and that bottom line net income is also looking very good. Consistent year on year, three year growth. Now, heading down to our growth pillar, we can see again knocking it out of the park completely. Uh, the share price has doubled uh, since inception. The return on equity, return on asset and return invested capital, all of these are greater than 10%. And then of course, to top it off, the earnings per share have got uh, compound annual growth in excess of 10%. So really just a strong set of fundamentals from the company. Now, of course, it comes down to the valuation section. So this is where we basically take a stock and we hold it up against the intrinsic value of the company. So we use two models for this. First of all, we use a free cash flow model. And the second is uni using the earnings per share. So just very quickly on the free cash flow model, uh, if we look at the multiple, it's currently trading at a multiple of 24.12. And uh, if we look at our modeling on this, we would do a low, medium and high case on 20, 25 and 30 respectively. So currently the stock in our opinion is worth about $206 based on the intrinsic value. And if we take into account a very conservative 12% growth factor for the company, that gives us $230 on the free cash flow intrinsic valuation over the next 12 months. Now I've come down to our DCF model, which is based on the earnings per share. If we throw in a discount rate of 15%, uh, normally we work to about 10%, but obviously we are anticipating a little bit of volatility in the market and up, up in the year ahead. So we are building in a little bit of extra safety. If we take our uh, bear, median and bull case in terms of growth at uh, 5, 10 and 15 respectively, and we're looking at a fair, uh, target PE of 18. We believe that the stock today is worth, based on the earnings per share, $230. And then again, with a projected 12% growth rate going forward over the next 12 months, we believe that uh, the stock on the earnings per share should actually be worth about $257. Now, of course, this brings us down to our verdict. And uh, as you can see, it's green everywhere. Uh, first of all, on the fundamentals, 100% score, so solid score there. Growth is 100%, so definitely they've proven their growth. And they obviously have got a little bit of challenge in terms of momentum coming up ahead. We've had a little bit of a fallback in terms of the operating cash flows and free cash flows. We'd like to see some more consistency there, but overall, really, really happy with the fundamentals. Now, the analysts are very bullish on this stock. In fact, they've come out and they've said, $349 over the next uh, 12 months. Personally, I don't believe that's gonna be the case. I feel that uh, there's obviously going to, we have to price in the fact that there is volatility in the market. And so we feel that uh, the stock is probably gonna be fair at $260 over the next 12 months, which uh, represents in true terms a 28% margin. Now, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel, I personally look to make somewhere between the order of 12 to 20% per annum on single stocks. Otherwise, without any risk, I'd actually just go and invest into an ETF or a mutual fund. And uh, as we can see here, this definitely is meeting that criteria. So based on my calculations, I think this is a good buy, even at today's pricing. And uh, with that said, uh, 
I think there's a 13%, at least a 13% discount in it on the current pricing if you're looking to make somewhere between the order of 12 to 20%. So I think it's a really, really good stock. And uh, definitely I'm gonna be keeping it as part of my portfolio this year. Um, I'm certainly not looking to trim my position. Uh, I'm not looking to add to it either unless there is potentially a little bit of a dip in the price. Obviously, if the price drops below its current level, then I would very seriously consider picking up some more stock because the fundamentals do look very good. In addition to which, as we've seen, the Optiva solution is driving a lot of new customers and a lot of new revenue into the business. And of course, they are now bringing in alternative forms of revenue with the coaching programs that they've launched. So I think it's a really, really good stock all around. And uh, yeah, guys, if you found value in this video and uh, you have any questions perhaps or any commentary, get involved in the discussion down below. Don't be shy. We've got a very active community of money tribers here on the channel who actively engage in conversations below each video. So don't be shy, get involved. And uh, also, if you are interested in some additional content like this, you can uh, check out some of the videos coming up on your screen shortly. In addition to which, visit the homepage of our channel and go and check out some of the playlists that we've put together for you guys. We've created uh, well over a thousand videos already on the channel, and there is lots of really good content to go through. So uh, until next time, as always, investing is about keeping a calm head and keeping your emotions out of it. And we'll see you guys in the next video real soon.